Well, as I record these words, we're coming to the very end of uh, confirmation season in the LA Archdiocese. We bishops out here confirm during one intense period, just the two months after Easter. So I've been doing a lot of preaching on confirmation, so I thought I'd maybe share some uh, insights from the homily I've come up with for this year. This year I focused on um, the names. So one of the marks of confirmation is that people take a new name. And it's certainly true biblically that when someone has a powerful experience of God, they often receive a new name, whether it's Jacob becoming Israel, Simon becoming Peter, Saul becoming Paul, etc. So I tell the kids, and I really mean that, look, you know, as you get confirmed, you're having a powerful experience of God as you receive the Holy Spirit. So it's appropriate that you receive a new name. I tell them uh, my confirmation name, which is Patrick. Now, I was 11 when I was confirmed, and frankly, I don't remember how I came to that decision to be called Patrick. Most likely, my Irish parents uh, strongly suggested it to me. But what I find interesting is when I was 11 and when I was confirmed, the furthest thing from my mind was being a priest, much less a bishop, much less an evangelist. Now, that's what Patrick was. Patrick was a bishop who evangelized Ireland. When I was 11, I wanted to be a baseball player. Uh, I wanted to be shortstop for the Chicago Cubs. But I tell the kids, it, it's true and weird that I've, as it were, grown into that name. That in the course of my life, I became a priest, eventually a bishop, and a lot of my work is in evangelization. It's as though that name of Patrick kind of seized me. So I tell them, in a way, you know, you've chosen the name, but much more significantly, that saint has chosen you. That saint has chosen you to be drawn into the power of his or her uh, life and witness. Well, then I make this remark that uh, in my three years anyway of doing confirmations out here, by far the most popular name for the young men is Sebastian, or Sebastian for the Hispanics. Um, and that's true, by the way, across the Anglo-Hispanic divide. Sebastian, Sebastian is the most popular name, probably because he's the patron of, of both soldiers and athletes, you know, so probably the young uh, athletes like him. But I make the point that, look, Sebastian was a Roman soldier, in fact, pretty high-level Roman soldier, who eventually died for his faith. But when someone became a Roman soldier in his time, they first made this sacred oath. They took an oath to the emperor, to the, to the empire, etc., to the army. And that oath was called in Latin a sacramentum. Right? So our word, sacrament, sacramento in Spanish, comes from that. And I tell the kids, look, in the course of this ceremony tonight, you're going to take a sacred oath. You're all going to stand up. I'm going to lead you through a series of oaths, of promises. Do you renounce Satan and all his works and empty promises? I do. Do you believe in God? Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? They say, I do, yes. Well, what that is, is a sacramentum. It's a sacred oath. On their own two feet, in their own voice, they're telling God and the people there who they are. Well, then I tell them, after the sacramentum, someone like Sebastian, someone becoming a Roman soldier, would have been branded. So they took out this thing they call the caractere in Latin, which means a brand, and they would tattoo them. They'd brand them, either on the hand, they think, or on the arm. What was that but a claiming of that person for Rome and for the army? They were, they were branded. They were claimed. Well, confirmation is called, in our theology, a character sacrament, right? a character sacrament. Like baptism and like holy orders, it brands you permanently. And I tell them, look, a, a tattoo, maybe a lot of people in the room have tattoos, and they're pretty permanent. They last your whole life but they're just the level of your skin. What I'm talking about is a, is a tattoo, a branding, at the level of your soul. So when I put the uh, sign of Christ's cross on their forehead, that's an external sign of the internal branding that will claim them forever as a member of, of this great army of Christ. Now, you know, mutatis mutandis, it's a metaphor I'm not telling them to, to go out and, and you know, take up arms, but they're like an army. They're like an army that's been shaped and formed and now sent on mission to bring uh, the life and work of Christ to the world. Okay. Well, the, the most popular name among the young women, in my experience, is probably a tie. 
between Cecilia, very popular, so the patroness of musicians, that's probably why. But I'd say Cecilia is tied with Teresa, Teresa. Um, anyway, you've got Teresa of Avila, you have Santa Teresita, right? You have Therese of Lisieux, the little flower. And then this year, very popularly, you have the most recent Teresa, namely Teresa of Calcutta, Mother Teresa. So I say, look, uh, let's, let's uh, reflect on her a little bit. Mother Teresa, this little lady, barely five feet tall, hears the call within the call to serve the poorest of the poor, and out she goes into the worst slum in the world, which I've been to. I was there filming some years ago, right where her mother house is. And there she was, though, in the early days, back in the, what, 40s and 50s, without money, without institutional support, with nothing. She, this little lady walks out into this slum and begins caring for the sick and the dying. Well, I say to the confirmandi, uh, what was her principle, this great Teresa? Many of you taking her name. What's her principle? Her principle was, don't worry about doing great things. Do little things with great love. Now, I realize that can sound a bit like a Hallmark card, but it's absolutely bedrock spiritual truth. Don't worry about doing great things in the eyes of the world. You know, wealth and power and achievement and accomplishment in the eyes of the world. That amounts to very little. Rather, worry about doing even the smallest thing with great love. Because see, love is the divine life. The divine life is not wealth. It's not power. It's not privilege or honor. Those can serve the divine life. But the divine life in itself is love. And so even the smallest thing in the eyes of the world, done with great love, gives you access to God's life and therefore makes you happy. That was the principle that she lived by. So I tell the confirmation kids, look, when you make your sacramentum in a few minutes, when you say, I renounce Satan and all his works and empty promises, that's exactly what you're saying. If I'm not going to worry about wealth, pleasure, honor, power, which are the, the great empty promises. I tell them that, I just read this recently, uh, Pope Francis refers to the devil as a con artist, which I think is, is good. You know, it's, he's like, hey, I got a deal for you. This is really going to make you happy. But they, they reject that. And then when they say, I believe rather in God and Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit in the church, what they're saying is, I believe in, this, in the power of the divine life surging through me. Well, then I, I end with uh, one more saint, namely my favorite saint, Thomas Aquinas. And at this point, I usually ask one of the servers who are wearing those little, they're called vimps, they're like little shawls that have the bishop's coat of arms on the back. I have a kid come out and, and turn around and I show them the coat of arms, which has that motto that I chose uh, from Aquinas, non nisi te domine, right? When Thomas was, was asked, the voice from the cross came, you've written well of me, Thomas, what would you have? And he said, non nisi te domine. I'll have nothing except you. So I said to the kids, that's really what you're saying today. When you take that sacramentum and you reject Satan and his works, you're saying, I want you, Lord. You're the source of my joy. Now, to bring that together, that's what makes you a powerful soldier in the army of Christ. If you can find that spiritual space, then you're ready as a confirmed strengthened member of Christ's mystical body to do his work in the world.